Today is Walter Russell's birthday. It's May 19th, 2021. And there was an extraordinary visionary, mystic, philosopher, teacher of the highest order, like a Buckminster Fuller, an Einstein, a Rudolf Steiner. His name was Walter Russell. And he, he basically put together a whole cosmology of, of quantum physics and astrological data that pretty much changed the world. So um, he was born 1871 to, to 1963. And um, I have a very special book of his called The Universal One, which I'm going to show you some of his extraordinary charts and diagrams from this book. Yes, yeah, so he, he's been a very important inspiration for me. And I, I, I was given his work by theosophical teachers like Callum Coates, who um, translated the works of Victor Schauberger. So I'm very fortunate to have mentors who above me who said, come into my library. You've got to study the works of Walter Russell. I'd never heard of him. I was in my 20s. And, and these books are very formative. They're life changing. They're, pr they're timeless. And um, so I just want to tell you a little bit about his life. Um, when he was a child, before he could walk or talk, he could play any tune with one finger. So he, he could listen to a song and with one finger actually play that whole song. So he had a connection to what we call frequency and vibration as a child. And, f and to further that depth of inquiry into the invisible world, his neighbor was a blind man. Again, as a child, his neighbor the blind man was was um was teaching him how to play piano so he learned at a very young age how to connect to the divine and that's why his work is really important because he 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 he's the bridge between what we call science and metaphysics because a lot of scientists today um ridicule metaphysical notions but we're going to see from his diagrams you can see here i'm going to explain this cubic grid here that these axes, these dimensions, these um, points are, are kind of like a web of consciousness that he, he basically believed that um, in, the, in every experiment, the mind, which is God, affects every experiment. This is what Einstein never realized, that, there's a, that crystals respond to both mind and geometry and that without an understanding of the um, cause, so mind is the cause where science sees the effects. So he went deep into the consciousness of atomic structure and that's why I'm calling this quantum. Quantum represents the infinitely microcosmic world and cosmology is also connecting the, the, the small world to the big world. Yeah, so um, he, he believed that the universe was based on what we call rhythmic balanced interchange. And he had this whole amazing philosophy about what we call plus four, minus four. So, um, because as you know, my life work is all based on the number nine. So you can see here that he's got, he, he keeps referring to this um, rhythmic balanced interchange between minus four and plus four. But see how it's, the neutrality is in the zero there. That represents four, one, and another four, that's nine, because nine underpins all sacred geometry. So his whole cosmology was based on plus four, minus four, which I found very interesting. And um, th that's how he related it. Um, he kept on relating all this to cubic ratios. So one cubed, two cubed, three cubed, four cubed, five cubed, and that these were divine proportions. So he saw the universe as um, a nesting of many, many spheres. So every time we talk about a cube, he would see the corresponding cube as a sphere or like a proton. So by understanding mathematics, he was able to define the, the invisible world through the visible ratios of um, cubic consciousness. So that, that's the big part of his work. So he wrote a book in 1927, that book I just showed you called The Universal One. And it was all about the cosmic laws. But the problem is at the time that the scientists at his time failed to understand um, his, his meaning, what he was on about. So it wasn't until another 20 years later, from 1927 up to 1947, so 20 years later, he decided to write another book called The Secret of Light. Uh, and, and it had another title, The Book of the Iliad. Iliad goes way back.
in the um, the master's works. But again, even by 1947, his work not was not accepted because he was talking about the existence of mind and matter. Because if you're a scientist, you only talk about matter. But he was saying that what permeates matter is is the mind is the consciousness of god and because he was talking like that um they didn't get him but one day they did give him a doctorate the reason why was that he had predicted four things in the periodic table and the name of them were deuterium which i think is heavy water tritium neptunium and plutonium which is used in nuclear reactions so he had he was a visionary he studied these mystical cubical ratios and the mathematics and the geometry and the mind and he he was writing about these four elements that no one had ever heard of so he predicted um, matter and when when scientists actually verified from their investigation that oh my god he he was correct they the american academy of sciences they actually conferred him a doctorate in 1941 so i wanted to mention that because a lot of amazing um, visionaries go unnoticed, but he, he, his work was definitive. He kept a record, diaries. His wife and team were on board with him. Yeah, so that's why in 1947, um, he put it, he, re, he redid the book. Um, and he did a lot of work with, um, he's, ac he's actually a chemist, um, and he was saying that one of the highest laws is called electrochemistry. The word chem, as you know, is like um, means ancient Egypt so this is somehow he had this access to the ancient knowledge of chem which has become our word for chemistry and pharmacology so all this um, memory he had all this ancient memory of so physics and what he was saying was that chemistry is really all about um, crystals and that we don't really understand crystals at a higher level so when we look at a crystal, say like storolite here, this this crystal is is called a crystal twin, because crystals are growing through through each other. And he said, he said the human mind can't even possibly understand how crystals even grow. So we're at a very low consciousness in understanding the natural world, the crystal world. And he kept talking about um, crystallography. So he would do some amazing charts with crystallography. Like this is all about crystal energy. This, this diagram here is saying that we, we have to understand the nature of crystals because today we know that without crystals, we wouldn't even have social media. We wouldn't even have satellites and that we can connect with crystals and talk to crystals and respond with crystals. But a scientist doesn't believe that. Yet your radio... Everything we're doing today, our music, is all based on crystals. So that's why he was always talking about crystal consciousness. Um, and I showed you this diagram before, how um, all the ratios of the cube, because crystalline structure is cubic in nature. So he had this whole amazing cosmology from the one cube, two cube, three cube, four cube. And so that, that, that was the most important thing that he did. So what I'd like to show you here is that because cube in in the ancient time was called the Kaaba and and as we know today in Mecca there's so much information about the cube there's billions of people walking around this big black cube because the bl the cube stores data it's the key to everything so you can see here I've drawn a transparent cube but he he understood the internal matrix of a cube so what, what i've drawn there is over here so you can see here i've drawn this cube and i'm just going to turn it around so you can appreciate some of the angles because what we're going to do is we're going to identify some of the um the axes how many axes of importance because these axes actually relate to dimensions so i'm going to join the opposite there's the, the three cross, there's a, the, like the storolite here, or this aragonite. See how aragonite, aragonite is a three-dimensional cross? This is what's inside the fish, fish's head, to, to, so it can have aquatic balance. So I'm going to draw these three opposing central face pairs. So that's the 3D, so let's draw it in. So with my yellow here, I've, I've got two opposing pairs here. I've got one, I've got another one going through here. And um, there's another, they've got one, two, and there's actually one going through there as well. 
So that's our central cross. And then we have um, these opposing pairs here. We have four, because there's eight corners, because there's eight corners, we have um, four diameters, space diagonals going through. I'll hold another two there. So I'll draw those space diagonals, say in blue. So we've already drawn, because the cube has six faces, we've already drawn one, two, and there's a third axis that you can't see. So, so far we've got three central axes, there's three. Now I'm going to draw um, the eight corners. The eight corners create four diagonals, so there's four here. So I'm just going to draw those in. So you, each time we just go through the center because these are polar, polar opposites. So this is a centered consciousness. So there's actually four of those. There's some that we can't see because of the angle. And also to the, the final ax axis, we've got 12 edges. So where I'm holding, oh, these, are, these are called um, zone tools. Um, and you can see that they, scientists and teachers are using this all around the world. You click and they connect really well. And we've got 12 edges to the cube. So with the, I'm going to take the 12, so half of 12 is 6. So that's going to give us another 6 lines in this diagram. So I'm going to join from that midpoint here of an edge to the opposing midpoint. So what I'm holding here are two opposing midpoints. And every line that we're drawing, I'll hold another two. This one connects to that one. They all pass through the center. So let's draw those in. And I'll draw those in, say, orange. So if we're going to go... We're going to go from this midpoint all the way down to here. And this midpoint here from the edge passes through the center and goes to there. And there's another midpoint that's from this midpoint. It goes to the center right through to the opposing one. So I hope that gives you an idea that um, when we examine the cube, um, we have 13 axes because what we just, we just drew now six midpoints of the edges. So four plus four corners, three centers and the six add up to 13 axes. And 13 is, is, is kind of like the 12 around the one. When we, when we talk about these are the 12 spheres around a central 13th sphere. So this, this actually creates what's inside of a cube. So there's the octahedron. That's what's inside the cube. So I just wanted to show you that um, Walter Russell was completely ahead of his time and predicted atomic structure because he understand understood the essential octavization the octaves within the crystals the the cube stores memory the word mem is a hebrew word mem means um the water and the ori as in the word origin ori means the light so when we're talking about memory and crystals we're talking about that liquid state of um, data that can be stored in our cells because our cells are watery. And he connected all of this to consciousness. So I just wanted to show you a few more images that um, he talked about. Um, so, we, so this is another one that he talked about, mind. I'll just have a little read here. So, so this was a typical chart where he's saying mind, there is only but one cosmic substance. And this is the source of man's supposedly many substances back to the one. So you can, you can see the plus four, minus four here. There's seven apparent different substances. He talked a lot about seven. And th from evolution to dissolution. So everything was always rising, falling. So in a cube, he would draw a wave from this corner to that corner. So it would be like a sine wave and then a cosine. So see this kind of vest shape so his whole philosophy excuse my finger but he his whole philosophy about the cube that the wave was had curvature passed through the center and then it came around to this point here so so that was the movement of all physics in the world so that was why his diagrams are very important and and then for example he would talk about um vortexes so you can see that the spiral once we've got the wave drawn he had this whole philosophy philosophy that when we rotate things and put spin the spin the vortex the spiral becomes matter so this is the creation of matter so mass is accumulated around a vortex um so and and this is just one of hundreds of diagrams 
about contracting forces, how they contracted, expanded. He 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 was obviously um, like Victor Schauberger. He was watching nature, and this very diagram that I've done here um, for each of the eight corners, he would have eight spheres. So. We, we've looked inside the internal matrix of the cube and the three planes, but he would go further. Oh, there's the wave here, that wave that I just drew through the center. You can see that he's talking about um, the creation of the universe and that the center point was the inertia. Um, so he would say here, the corners of the cubes of motion are the points of north which become the gravitative centers of all systems formed on the carbon line in the bisexual position of plus four minus four. So this is just the beginning. So it's all about octaves because of the eight corners represent octaves. Um, just a few more diagrams. This this is the same diagram but with um, this is the same diagram but without the 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 eight spheres on the eight corners and you were just examining the particle and all of that is really saying he's talking about stability versus instability that's what the plus and the minus plus minus from instability to stability so the center point was stability and that obviously represent the stability point of our own consciousness is that when we make time to connect with nature and we go into our cube we enter our spherical consciousness when we find that point within our own self then we are connected to all things in the universe thank you for following this